This is African American History is American History. Born in 1767 in St. Thomas, Denmark, B.C., was a free black man and community leader in Charleston, South Carolina. Likely born into slavery in St. Thomas, V.C. was enslaved by Captain Joseph V.C. in Bermuda for some time before being brought to Charleston. He chose the surname V.C. and the given name Denmark after the country that ruled his birthplace of St. Thomas. There, V.C. won a lottery and purchased his freedom around the age of 32. He had a good business and a family, but was unable to buy his first wife, Beck, and their children out of slavery. This is African American History is American History. Denmark V.C. worked as a carpenter and became active in the Second Presbyterian Church. In 1818, he co-founded an independent African Methodist Episcopal congregation in the city, today known as Mother Emmanuel. The congregation began with the support of white clergy and with over 1,848 members, rapidly became the second largest AME congregation in the nation. In 1822, Denmark V.C. was accused and convicted of planning a major slave revolt. V.C. assembled a group of enslaved people and free blacks with the plan to execute their enslavers and liberate Charleston. They would then escape to Haiti. However, two enslaved men opposed to the plot leaked it, leading to the arrest of 131 men. Ultimately, 76 were convicted and 35 including Denmark V.C., were hanged. Although the alleged plot was discovered before it could be carried out, its sheer scale struck fear among the white slave owners and led to increased restrictions on both enslaved and free African Americans. On July 18, 1948, Richard Durham's weekly radio program, Destination Freedom, aired the story of Denmark, B.C. Destination Freedom. The Chicago Defender and Station WMAQ bring you Destination Freedom. A new radio series dramatizing the great democratic tradition of the Negro people interwoven in the pageant of history and a part of America's own destination freedom. Today, Destination Freedom tells the story of the daring Denmark Vesey and fought for the end of slavery 20 years before John Brown and the Civil War. Denmark Vesey. Come before the bench to be sentenced. He's coming. They grab at him, but he walks straight. <laughs> He's a cool one. He'll be a dead one in an hour. He'll walk no more. He'll hang for all the walking he's done. Clark! 
read out the record of his crime. They say he walked as though the world watched him. They say the clerk read out his crimes. They say a gamble was the beginning of it. A gamble one night at the carnival when he bought a forty-dollar play on a lottery table and stood under the tent while the barker called in the best. The greatest raffle in history. Get your mess in, folks. Get him in. That's all. We're off. As he goes round and round and where she'll stop, nobody knows. The greatest gamble in history. Round and round and she's stopping. Don't get excited, ladies and gentlemen. She's stopping. She's stopping on number six, seven, eight, nine. Little old number nine is the winner. The winner. Number nine pays a hundred to one. Who's got number nine, folks? You? You got number nine, fella? I got it. How much am I worth? The number in sight saves the fight. Show it. Here. Ah. Uh, name goes with it. Dead Mark Vincent. Check. Check. All right. Beginner's luck will break me. You gambled heavy. I always gamble heavy. Say, you're Captain Beasy's slave, ain't you? I am. Ah. I wonder what had happened to me, say, if I just refused to pay off a slave. I wonder if the courts had bothered. Uh-huh. Well, I wonder what would happen to me. Say, if I should take a Barker's neck between my fingers, like this broomstick, and snap it like that. They'd hang you. You know it. I gambled once. I'll gamble again. Well, uh, I'm not a gambling man myself. I don't gamble. I'm my own neck. Then how much am I worth? Four thousand dollars. All right. Take it, and the devil be with you. <laughs> Say Denmark wrapped his money in a sack and went aboard his ship to see his master. Captain Beasley was napping over a jug of rum. Denmark. Denmark, is that you? Yes. What you come here for? Master, how much am I worth? Ah, it's that talk again. Uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, freedom is a sickness. It's unbecoming to a slave. Master, all I want... Get it out of your mind. It's those books you read that turn your head. A slave shouldn't read too much. I've watched you talk to the people in the market. You tell the slaves they're born equal. Oh, nonsense. Master. If you stay with me, you'll stop this reading and writing to everybody. Where did it get you? Lately, I've stopped reading. Yeah, I know. I know. But now you're out working your spare time for other masters. You get a penny here, a penny there. Denmark hopes to save enough to buy Denmark. You know how long that will take you? I know. All your life. I need money, too. I know how hard it comes these days. Why don't you sell me? Ah, if I could get your price. How much am I worth? All right. Say, uh, $2,000. All right. $2,000. Oh, what? You, you've got $2,000? I've got my release papers. Will you sign them? Sign? You need the money. Yeah, yeah. I need my freedom. Hmm. Well, uh, well, you'd find a way to escape if I didn't let you go. My pen. Uh, I feel like I am releasing a tornado. There. What will you do with this uh, freedom? What will you do with this money? Hmm. I use it to help me and my family. Well, I'll use my freedom to help others become free. Hmm. I never understood you, Denmark. Uh, pour me a drink, and then finish sweeping my cabin. Are you asking me or ordering me? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I see. You, you begin right away. Huh? It's strange to have owned a man's body for 20 years, yet not know the first thing about his mind. You're free. They say the captain set him free to circulate like fresh blood through the slave system. A basket of cherries. Huh, what, Denmark? <laughs> you can afford cherries? Yesterday I was a slave. 
And they I'm a free man. Uh -huh. I heard about your luck. You can have the same luck, Cherry. They say you're a learned man, Denmark. <laughs> but now you talk like a donkey. My master spends the money I make. Well, I get in it to buy myself. Well, it's not money alone that makes a man free, Cherry. Money did quite well for you. Then a gamble. I know a greater gamble. Would you gamble? If the stakes were right. If the stakes were freedom. If I could show you that every slave in Charleston is right to rebel, to build a nation where all men are equal, would you stake your life on it? Are you willing? Are my cherries red? Blood red. My stakes are in. Get the others. All right. Cherries, master! Cherries! Get your red! Denmark's disease hit the slaves in the marketplace like a plague. They say he believed no slave was immune to it, and he risked a talk with Rolla Hard, the wealthy slave of Colonel Potter. Rolla and his brother Ogden, who'd never been hungry, never lashed, spaded their garden and talked to Denmark. Who am I to be in a revolution? The master sees me alone. I leave them alone. I never know what they're doing. But you know what the slaves are doing, Rolla. You're sent to talk to them when there's trouble. Isn't that true, Ogden? Yes, we talked to them all right. You talk uncommonly well, too, Rolla. I've heard you tell a slave when the train was coming on the underground track. I've heard you Keep tell... Keep your voice down. Then, Mark, don't talk that way around here. Rolla, you worked well for the masters. Now, work well for yourself. You know every slave who can handle a horse. The day will come, we'll need them. Will you be with us? How'll I know when the day comes? Yes. How will we know it's safe? When our numbers have grown. If you come and bring all those who follow you, we'll have a thousand. If I come, they'll come. But some will only follow the gospel man, Peter Poyas. He's a man of peace. What do you do about him? You recruit your friends. I'll recruit Peter. They say Denmark read the Bible that night, read Exodus, Leviticus, Joshua, and Job, and in the morning went to the cabin of the slave Peter. Peter sat singing, rocking in a chair, and looking out at the sun. Oh, when the saints come marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints come marching in. Peter, oh. last night I read the Bible. I, I read it every night, Denmark. I read the words of Zachariah. Yeah, I know the words of Zachariah. Zachariah said, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken. Charleston is Jerusalem, Peter. Denmark, the Lord warned Gideon, wants to be careful about the men he picked to lead his army. There may be a Judas among the slaves. You're no Judas. I am not, but I'm against violence. I'm against bloodshed. Are you against slavery? God's against it. Then how will you cure it? Can you reason with slaveholders? It's a tense thing. But your way is foolish and certain death. I, I see your mind is set. It's wrong. But I'll march in Gideon's army. My followers will come with me. But the superstitious follow Gullah Jack. Gullah? The, the sorcerer who sells spells and charms? Him? My son. In a revolution. One looks for the honest, not the honored. Some say Gullah Jack is crazy. Some say he's wise. You go to the hills and find his house and see him. It'll be deep in the woods. You'll hear him talking to his drums, calling on his God. Who's that? <laughs> to cast 
a spell, you should come at night to buy a charm, come at twilight. Ah. Denmark Vesey, the disbeliever. Why do you come? I come to test your spells. First, twist your neck and tap your knee. Snap your fingers. Tie together black men and white men in a common fight to free every man. Cast a charm that'll bind them together like a Gideon's army to strike with me when the hour comes. If you are the sorcerer they say you are. So, is this the only reason you're here? Is there a better reason? Go back to your books and leave me alone. You come with contempt for me. And you say, sorcerer, cast a spell and make men free. I'm crazy, but I'm not a fool. If I could cast a charm to free a man, wouldn't I cast one to free myself, huh? <laughs> then what good do your charms do? They're for the lonely, the lost. Those who want to be free don't come to me. They know I can't heal their sickness. Peter said you might be an honest man, and you are. I'll show you how you can help free men. You? Listen, Gala. Huh? I read once of a giant who fell asleep in a strange land. And while he slept, an army of little men tied him with ropes and chains. The giant was a slave while he was asleep. But when he awoke, he stretched and shook himself. And the chains snapped and the ropes broke. And the little men fell off his back and he stood up strong and free. He was a giant. You were the slaves of giants. The masters of the little men. When the slaves wake and stretch, they'll be free. You can help awaken those who believe in your spell. I see. Maybe I can help. They say Denmark and Yalla Jack, Yalla Hart and Peter Poise had a pact to wake up the giant and put the slaveholder to sleep. They say the recruits grew into thousands, and the day was near when Denmark's disease could not be quarantined. They say Denmark gathered his leaders together in the loft of a lonely barn to set the hour. This will be the last meeting. Rolla, who knows me here? Only my brother, Ogden. I told him to warn us if you heard anything from the masters. Good. You've got together the horses and riders. Every slave who handles their horse will be ready to pull cannons once we get them. Gullah. I've been to the arsenal. I cast a spell for the captain just yesterday. This time of year, it's full of cannon and powder. If we take the arsenal, the city is ours. Good. You, Peter. Denmark, what we planned is wrong. God won't let it succeed. The Lord spoke to me last night. Yes. He said, watch out for the Judas. You said that before. We were all watching. No one's watching Rolla. Huh? He talks too freely. Uh, what have I said? The colonel's houseboy, Jason, overheard Rolla talking. He'll tell his master, I'm sure. Rolla takes our lives on his tongue. Peter, you'll accuse no one till you're certain. The book teaches to watch for the Judas. We'll head off the Judas. Peter, set your men for Sunday. Rolla, Denmark, they found us. What, what are you talking about, Arthur? Run while you can. They're coming for us. Who's Somebody. coming? Who knows about it? Everybody. Who, who told them you? No, no, not me, Jason, the houseboy. I said Rolla talked too much. I warned you. The Lord is against you. Be quiet with you. It's no time to be quiet. You've got to run. Run! And in the four years we worked and planned for this day, we'll stand our ground. What, what do we do, Denmark? What do we do? Huh? Rolla. Yes? The colonel is your master. You'll face him. What? There's not much time. I can see them coming from here. They'll be here in a minute. Now, Rolla, tighten your nerves. Go down and meet them. Why, Denmark? You'll face your master. You out talk him, or we'll all hang. Go on. Shall I cast the charm for Rolla? No. And Rolla cast his own charm now. Go down, Rolla. They say Denmark waited in the loft while Rolla climbed down the ladder and walked to the door to face his accuser. They say the colonel had the revolution resting at his gun point. Master, come in. Needn't say master to me anymore, boy. When this is done, you'll be dead. What? Don't play the fool. Jason told me about your plot. But before I have you shot, 
You'll give me the name of every leader and recruit in your rebellion. Rebellion? Me? What? What are you talking about, Master? God. Yes, sir. Bring up Jason. Yes, sir. Get up here, you. Colonel, you call me? Jason, tell forgetful Rolla what you overheard. Um, I, I heard him say he'd get men to, to burn the plantations, overthrow the slave systems, the way he put it. You hear that, Rolla? Oh, poor Jason. Feel sorry for yourself. I feel sorry for you, Master, for believing him. The best slave you've got. I've worked harder, earned more for you than Jason, haven't I? Yes, you've done that. Why, I'm the wealthiest slave in Charleston. I eat well. I've never complained or asked for anything. Yes, that's right. Then wouldn't it seem I like my slavery? I love my masters. It would seem a sane man would. If you kill me... Who'll handle your cotton? Who'll earn the way I do? Devil, if you're not right. Doesn't seem natural that you'd rebel now, does it? No, it doesn't. Jason, there are rumors in there without your adding to them. But, Master... God, take him to the yard. Yes, sir. 30 lashes. Yes, sir. Oh, Come on, Jason. Roller. Yes, sir. Tomorrow we'll talk and get to the bottom of this. You've always had a glib tongue, but... There's something deeper in you I've never understood. There'll come a day when I'll... I'll know what's in your mind. Yes, Master. There is coming that day. Uh, forgive my suspicion, Rolla. Judas has been found in time. I've been wrong. You do well for a wealthy slave. I'd rather be the poorest free man than the richest slave. Denmark, when do we strike? Tomorrow. There'll be militia heading this way. We know it now. We've got to beat them to the arsenal. Peter. Yes. Go to the masters who've heard of the rumors of revolt. Pour honey in their ears. I'll speak softly. Gullah, give your master the strongest sleeping charm you can make. You'll never wake from it. All right. Now, I'll draw a map of the marketplace here in the dirt. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, this is the arsenal. Mm -hmm. Here's a street leading to it. Here the horsemen will wait. One will drive off and tell the slaves as soon as we open the arsenal. Right. Mm -hmm. After that, Gullah takes the left flank and Peter takes the right. Now, everything depends on getting into the arsenal ahead of the militia. 10,000 slaves wait to strike when we get the weapons. Who will warn us if the militia comes? There's a chairwoman in the market. I'll tell her to warn us. If the militia beats us there... Shall we turn back? Where would we run? Where would we turn? This is a one-way walk, men. We look ahead to liberty. To death. All right. What about the map? Go to your people. And tell them when the moon is down to fall in behind us. We walk through the market. When I pass the cherry woman, I'll tell her how to warn us. The militia comes. Is the road clear, cherry? It's clear, but the militia's on the way. Can you warn us when you see them? I'll stand in their way selling cherries. And when I call blood red, they're on us. They may take your life with this. My stakes are in. Let me sell my cherries. All right. We'll see what we can buy over at the arsenal. Peter, you ready? The Lord has spoken. Gullah? <laughs> Twist your neck and tap your knee. When the moon goes down, I'll be free. All right. Well, I'm with you. All right. Play casual. Peter, sing along. The revolution the is on. Go marching on. Oh, when the saints go marching on. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching Great. The militia broke into the city and charged the market. Denmark was near the gates of the arsenal. They say you could hear the cherry woman cry when her eyes caught sight of the soldiers. Thank <laughs> you.
They say the shots tore down like a vine off a tree. Red cherries jumped into the gutter. Red blood shot from the wounded men. Red cherries rolled under the feet of the fighting, the straining, the reaching to be free. The reaching fell short. The militia took the arsenal. They say they took a hundred dead men to their graves. They took Denmark V.C. to court. Order! Order in the court! Denmark V.C.? Yes, Your Honor. You've plotted rebellion against the state that bred you. You set out to slaughter your master and change the state. Before I pass sentence, do you have a word to explain your crimes? I... I have a word to say. Then speak it. You speak of my crimes. I feel no guilt. I felt to be idle while other men thought to be free was a crime. I was not idle. Others talked. I acted. I'd act again. Order! Order! Is that all you can say to explain your treachery? No. My treachery began when I read the Declaration of Independence. It said all men are created equal. It grew when I read that Black Crispus Attucks died to help the colonies become free. Did he die just to free white men or all men? And then I read what Ben Franklin, Tom Paine, Lafayette, and Jefferson had said, and their words warmed my blood. They wanted their revolution to make all men free and equal. But they stopped with some men free and some men slaves. I took up where they left off. I found my price when I was a slave. I paid it. If my life is the price I pay to be free, take it. I'll pay it. But until all men are free and equal, the revolution goes on. <laughs> for the highest price. The clerk stopped writing. The hangman's hand tightened, then relaxed on the rope. Denmark had paid it. The masters went home to bed. But they say Gullah Jack in his cell cast a spell, and no master slept well. They say the giant was awake, and the giant never slept again until all slaves were free. That's what they say about Denmark Vesey. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me. And before I'd be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. You have just heard Destination Freedom's dramatization of the story of Denmark Vesey. Destination Freedom is brought to you by the Chicago Defender and WMAQ's Department of Education and Public Service. It is written by Richard Durham, and the production is under the direction of Homer Heck. <laughs>
This is WMAQ, NBC in Chicago. This has been African American History is American History.